Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, August 7th, 2018 edition of the Sand Center Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from San Antonio, Texas. The DA took a second look today at numeric obfuscation. He already wrote about this, I believe it was Friday, but now he's looking at some more complex examples. What this really refers to is that uh, one way to obfuscate strings is to essentially just use the numeric ASCII codes for each letter of the string. Now, this in itself, of course, is pretty easy to undo, but once you're dealing with numbers, then of course, you can use various arithmetic operations to make it further difficult to actually figure out which ASCII codes are being used and into what strings they translate. In the latest diary, Didier is looking at how some of his tools can be used to also decode some of these more complex examples. Now, I'm not sure how familiar people are with the company Crestron. I see the devices a lot in hotels and also in classrooms. They do make various systems, usually touchscreen based, that allow you to do things like control monitors, control projectors, or control the lighting in the room. Security company Security Compass now found a number of vulnerabilities in these systems that do evolve around an administrative interface that is listening on port 41,795. This interface is typically used to control these screens from software that Crestron provides. It's not well documented according to Security Compass what you can actually do with it, but Security Compass found a number of vulnerabilities in this particular interface that do allow unauthenticated remote control of the device. These devices run as an operating system Android, so you have Linux available. Once you are able to execute code on the device, then of course you can use everything that you know about Linux and Android to further escalate your privileges. Well, these systems themselves, since they are controlling uh, these projectors and such themselves, they don't really have a lot of data necessarily that an attacker could then steal from the device. But it's certainly possible that sensitive data is passing through these devices or that using a device like this as a beachhead, an attacker could then further infiltrate the network. I've talked about TLS 1.3 a number of times during this podcast. As of today, we do have a free and open source library from Facebook to support TLS 1.3. Facebook calls this library FIS, and it's essentially what Facebook internally uses to support TLS 1.3. At this point, it's not officially a standard yet. Uh, TLS 1.3 is supposed to become RFC 8446, which, as far as I know, has been finalized, hasn't been published yet. So yes, the standard is final, and in so far, it makes sense for it to be implemented. What surprised me a little bit is that Facebook states that 50% of its traffic already uses TLS 1.3, but yes, uh, various browsers started adding adding support for it over the last year or so. One of the main features that's pointed out by Facebook is, of course, performance of this library. Now, they also state that it is quite feature-rich, unlike some of the alternatives, like, for example, Google's Boring SSL, which tries to be an SSL library that's particularly removing features in order to provide better security. Facebook does point to some of the architecture choices it made with this library to actually enhance security as opposed to, for example, open SSL. Given that TLS 1.3 is still pretty new, I think these security claims have to be proven over time. The performance, well, that's probably where FIS really shines. And if you're really concerned about performance, you probably want to take a look at this library. Well, and that's it for today. I mentioned that I'm in San Antonio this week. Tomorrow on Tuesday, I will be giving an evening talk here at the conference starting at 7.15. If anybody is interested in attending, please drop me an email. Don't just show up. Space is limited, but I can accommodate a few guests here. So just drop me an email and uh, I'll tell you whether or not I have any spots left. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.